Hello everyone, this is me Manoj, your English coach. Welcome to Love English. And in today's video, I'm gonna be re reading the story Hassan's Attendance Problem by Sudha Murthy from the book How I Taught My Grandmother to Read and Other Stories. Now let's get started. For many years now, I have been teaching computer science to students studying for their masters in computer applications at a college in Bangalore. I have interacted with many students and though it is not possible to remember all of them now, the memories of some are etched in my mind. That is not because they were all brilliant but something in them was very different from the others. In my first batch, there was a very bright, student, bright boy called Hassan. He was tall, handsome, with a very good memory. He came from an affluent family where he was the only son. Initially, I did not come to know of his existence at all. Mainly because he was hardly ever present. I normally take the first class of the day, which is scheduled at 9 am or the one after that at 10 am. I prefer this time as this is when students are fresh and very attentive. Once in a while, Hassan would turn up particularly if there was a class test or during examinations. I met him more often for attendance shortage meetings. He would beg for attendance in such a manner that it was very difficult for me to say no. Sometimes I would get upset and tell him, no, I can't give you attendance. There should be discipline. Yes, madam, he would reply apologetically. Pardon me. From the next semester onwards, I will definitely attend your class. Can you not pardon me this time? To err is human, to forgive is divine. You have only taught us this. I could not remain angry for long. Teachers do get upset with students who are not regular. But if the attendance shortage affects their appearance in the final examination, then one tends to melt like snow against the sun. A good teacher will always wish for the best for her student. Though I do agree, discipline is very important too. As he was very bright, Hassan would invariably get a first class in the exam. However, before the exam started, every semester this drama with Hassan would be repeated. I would get upset, threaten and ultimately give in. Each time Hassan would promise to improve his attendance record and for one week would attend all classes. Then the same old story would follow. Each time he had different reason for his absences. Unfortunately, they always seemed genuine to me. Once I got tired of his stories and called his parents. Your son is a bright boy. He is not arrogant, but he is, not, but he is indisciplined. If only he came to class regularly and attended the lab, I'm sure he can get a rank. I failed to convince him. I will be happy if you could look into the matter more seriously. Because this is going to affect his life, I said to them. Hassan's father was a busy man and uh, did not take my words very seriously. He said, as long as he does well, that is fine with me. Because after a certain age, children don't listen to their parents. Only life will teach them. But his mother was in tears. Madam, I have failed as a mother. He does not listen to me at all. He spends all night listening to music and chatting with his friends. He sleeps at 6 in the morning. How can he come to any class? He does not pay any attention to what I say and tells me I repeat the same things always. The meeting ended in an argument between his parents. His father said, You are the mother. It is your duty to correct him. You spend more time with him. I am so busy. You have failed. His mother said, You are the father. It is difficult to control boys. You can speak to him. Man to man. Earning money is not the only thing in life. This continued for a while and the meeting ended fruitlessly. Hassan continued in this ways till he passed out of his course, as usual in first class. 
He was a nice boy. He came and thanked me. Madam, thank you for teaching me for the last three years. Because of your kind heart, I could get all my attendance. I wish all teachers were like you in the college. I laughed. God willing, we will meet again. But I did not meet Hassan for a long time and forgot all about him. Years passed. I taught many students. Some of them became very good human beings. Some became famous. Some became rich and some remained ordinary. As far as I was concerned, they were like my children. Some remember me still and send invitations to weddings, naming ceremonies, housewarmings, etc. If I'm in town, I definitely try and attend. Because for me, their immense love is my strength. One Monday morning, my secretary told me a person wanting to sell the latest software in high school teaching wanted to meet me. I was extremely busy and the piles of unanswered letters were looking at me accusingly. I had no time to talk to a salesperson, so I told her he can meet someone else, I don't have time. But my secretary said he was insisting he wanted to meet only me and that he was my student. She knew how fond I was of all my students, so she had been unable to say no to him. In that case, let him see me at 2 p.m. In the afternoon, a man of about 35 years, plump, with a bald head and more directly dressed, was waiting for me in the office. In his hand was a CD with the software. I could not place him though he seemed familiar. He smiled at me and said, Madam, can you recognize me? You may not because how can you remember all your students? From a window you can see the outside world, but from outside you cannot see all that is inside. I liked his analogy and was sure he was my student because I often used this phrase in my class. Still I could not guess who he was. Madam, I was the perpetual latecomer of your class. That's when the coin dropped. Hi Hassan, how are you? It's been a long time since I last met you. I was very happy to see him. Madam, I'm fine and remember many of your lessons. Is it database management or C or Pascal? None of the software, madam. I remember the moral lessons. I didn't know what moral lessons I had taught. Though I do tell some stories during my lectures on computer software. Hassan, what are you doing now? Now his face became a little pale. Madam, I'm selling this software which is useful in teaching maths, physics and chemistry. It is of help to both teachers and students. I know your foundation helps a lot in education at the high school level. I thought it may be of some interest to you. Hassan, what did you do for so many years? I knew all his classmates by this name were in very high positions in the software industry. Hassan being a bright student should have definitely done well. Yet on the contrary, he seemed to be doing a small job of selling high school software door to door. Madam, you know, I was very regular in college. The same habit continued even after my graduation. I would get a plate and was very lazy. My mother would lose her temper and peace of mind. I did not bother. I took her for granted. After a lot of pressure from my parents, I took up a job. But I continued with the same habits of going late to office, not keeping appointments and not being responsible. I did not have the proper knowledge also. In college, I hardly studied. Getting a first class in the examination is not an index of the amount of knowledge one has. I would study just before the exams, guess the probable questions and skip the chapters. I always thought I could somehow make it later. But without proper knowledge, it is difficult to work. I always laughed at those people who were hard workers. I used to make fun of them and call them nerds. Today those nerds have become millionaires. Nobody liked me in my office because of my behavior. No employer would keep such an employee. And I lost whatever job I took up. In my frustration, I started quarreling at office as well as at home. Finally, my father got so fed up, he told me to stay separately. He always gave me a lot of freedom, but I never picked up any good habits. 
My state today is the result of my own habits. I feel sorry for Hassan, who with all his intelligence and good nature could not make it. Hassan, you knew your faults. Ha, you could have improved and made a better life for yourself. There is always a start at any age. Don't get disappointed. You may have lost a battle, but you can still win the war. Madam, all habits die hard. But Hassan, it is possible to change your habits. There is nothing which is impossible. You only require willpower. You are yourself not aware of all your potential. Because remember, please remember, when elders say something, they do so because they want you to lead a better life than, they, than them. Excellence does not come by accident, but by practice. I could see a twinkle in his eyes. I thought I saw a glimpse of the young bride Hassan. I will try my best, madam, he promised as he rose to leave. I have not met Hassan since that day. I hope to bump into him unexpectedly once again and this time find him happy and successful. So this was the story everyone. Thank you so much for listening to the story patiently. See you in the next story. Thank you for attending this session. Do share and subscribe to this channel for more lessons like this. Check out other video lessons by clicking on the video.